please subscribe and don't forget to press the bell icon to get notified whenever we upload a new video. Good morning. Welcome to Bazaar Morning Call. I'm Lata Venkatesh and with me are Anuj and Reema for uh, standing in for uh, Sonia. Well, uh, don't get taken away by our red tie and red attire. Uh, the markets look set for volatility. It uh, uh, Dollar is strong, which is usually a negative, but it is lower than what it was yesterday. Crude is higher, but uh, it's still low compared to the standards that we have been used to. So it's not very clear at all how global queues uh, will buffet Indian market and how they will evolve through the day. For us, uh, the important point is that uh, the Nifty could not climb over 11,070 yesterday despite some positive queues. And now it will remain to see whether it can prevail over the support of 10,900. Uh, in between, of course, there are important results coming in, both of which are likely to be positive for the market. Kotak Mahindra Bank numbers today, as well as the Bajaj Twins numbers, they have been the pillars of the market. So chances are the news through the day need not be negative. I mean, one has to just brace for volatility is what I feel. Morning, both of you. Hi, Lata. Good morning. Hi, Anuj. Good morning. But positive earnings continue to trickle in in the U.S. market. So strength in Morgan Stanley boosted the Dow Jones higher for the fifth straight day in a row. And there's something to be said about the technology stocks in the U.S. So IBM reported numbers post-market hours in the U.S. Uh, that stock was higher by 2.5%. And it's now seen three consecutive quarters of revenue growth, which follows five successive years of a revenue decline. So the tide seems to be turning for tech stocks uh, globally. But back to our own markets, um, Anuj, in the morning, the Sensex scaled fresh record levels. From there, of course, we retreated about 150 points in the Sensex. But the problem is in the broader markets. And now it's not just your PC jewelers and the Vakrangi, uh, these stocks which have seen a sharp fall. Even wealth creators, like I was looking at uh, a Tata Global Beverages and IGL, Bharat Forge, even these stocks are down nearly 20% YTD or year to date. Yeah, they are. Uh, uh, Ashok Leland was down quite mm. a bit yesterday. 14, 15 percent, yeah. yeah uh, so, you know, uh, <coughs> Reema, uh, again, you know, uh, uh, you know uh, saying the same things over and over uh, for last four or five months, uh, that's the point I've been making ad nauseum now. Uh, yesterday also the market move was not surprising. We, you know, spoke about 11,070 as the line in sand and that, you know, you go there, risk reward is not in favor of you to chase at 11,070. Look, let's let's put some some more numbers. Uh, you know, uh, every morning I'm trying to give some interesting numbers these days. Uh, excluding the top 10 stocks, uh, the BSE market cap is down 16.7 lakh crores this oh, year. Oh, that's big. And, you know, overall it's still not down because the top 10 stocks have added 7 lakh crores in market cap. Okay. That's been the extent of the market market dichotomy. Like. But the top 10 stocks uh, now account for over 25% of the market cap. Uh, of course, in US, it's uh, over 50%. <laughs> but uh, back home also, that's been the, the trend. 300 BSC stocks are down anywhere between 50 to 90% from 52-week highs. Uh, uh, you know, in certain cases, this is almost 2008 playing out, like we discussed earlier as well. At least in the broader market, in the... B group and below that, it's already played out. In you know, terms of stocks, overvaluation. Exactly. Yes. When stocks are down 50 to 90 percent, this is, you know, yesterday was, I think, the most hated all time high on Sensex. Uh, <laughs> uh, you know, Sensex at all time high, portfolio is down 10 to 40 percent. Uh, but that's, that's what's happening. The money is seeking comfort of the largest cap stocks, and that's why the large caps are up and uh, the uh, mid caps are down. Nifty levels to watch, 11,070 is key. Now, again, you know, this perhaps could be one of those years where the index perhaps will hit new high. Uh, the bank nifty perhaps will hit new highs, even though it, that may not mean much. But the level to watch again for me is 11,070. Sustaining above that is the key. Today's weekly options expiry, the most important number today is Kotak Mahindra Bank. It's the second biggest stock in the bank nifty, uh, of course, results today. Uh, the vulnerability of this market is like yesterday, in last half an hour, the way HDFC bank fell. So, you know, like the analogy that I gave was that 90s uh, India team, Sachin fails, the market fails. So mm. if the three or four large stocks fall, then the market is vulnerable. This market is not going to provide you a charitable exit in B group and below. That is one thing which should be clear to everyone. If you are having a hope that you know your stocks which you bought at 100 are now back to 40, 30, are going to give you, you know, exit at your price, that won't happen. The market will give you opportunities like Mon uh, Tuesday when the market had that rally. Uh, where the most beaten down stocks rallied. Those rallies you have to use, you have to still get into the comfort of the large caps because this, you know, normally the second half accentuates the trend of first half. The first half has been like this. 
uh, even though people may believe that now in second half things will change, second half may, might actually accentuate the trend of first half. Uh, for today, uh, 10,956, yesterday's low on Nifty, that perhaps would be a good entry opportunity. Uh, yesterday's low 26,834 perhaps, uh, again good entry opportunity for Bank Nifty because what will happen is even if you have a gap up, the first move would be uh, to try to sell into that and after that perhaps at lower levels some buying would emerge. Uh, the indices are not weak because mm. globally it's not collapsing. So indices are not weak, the broader market is weak. Yeah and well, I take your point about uh, you know two big results coming in today mm. but you look at the valuation over there. Uh, your Bajaj Finance is trading at seven and a half times book, mm -hmm. 19, uh, FY19 numbers. Of course, it's expected to post, you know, like 40% growth in uh, e EPS in earnings and uh, loan growth uh, would be about, you know, 25-30%. Likewise, Kotak Mahindra, four and a half, four point six 4.6 times book. Yes, it will post 25% uh, earnings, but still the price is 4.5 times book. Uh, let's put you know, that on the table. I, I, I tell you one thing. Uh, it was at 1250 on Bajaj Finance when we, you know, I had uh, someone saying yet. that it's the most expensive stock and would now fall 50% from here. Oh. It's doubled from there, oh, right? Yeah. Uh, and you know, Kotak, okay, four point. Kotak has been the biggest. It's given you more wealth than HDFC Bank has over the last for 10 or 12 years. Uh, you know, you seek value in price to book value. You might get into a Punjab National Bank and then you see what happens. So I think that. that no, no, has I been take the your logic. point. No, the whole thing is, you know, if if you if the market were to lose, like you always mm. worry about the FANG mm. stocks, uh, yes. this would be our FANG stocks. Uh, exactly. Even if they lose, yes. two years down the line, they will come no, back. I tell you one but thing. are you sure it two be, years down be, the line? It will be healthy for the market if these stocks also correct. These stocks also need to correct. Overvaluation is as big a problem as is, you know, the fraud or whatever uh, happens in the mid cap and small cap. I mean, but the problem is that there's too much money chasing too few stocks. And that's why, you know, you're saying it's more like, you know, South Mumbai real estate. Absolutely, uh, you know, Altamount a, Road, you yes. Know, you, you will uh, always crib about valuation, but you'll have to pay that. All right, and these top 10 stocks also constitute nearly 35% of the FI's Indian holdings. So that is about the concentration of uh, flow moving into these stocks. But let's take a look at what our wise experts have to say going into uh, trade this morning. Gautam Chacharya of UBS says, the Nifty is up 4% in 2018 so far, but most investor sentiment suggests we are in a bear market. He says a majority of the Nifty constituent stocks are down and 40% of them are down more than 10% in 2018. He says of all the listed stocks, 60% are down at least 20% in 2018 so far. Gotham adds, small and mid-cap indices are down 16 to 23% in 2018 but inflow into the small and mid-cap schemes of mutual funds remain positive. Their analysis suggests similar trends historically in periods of sharp currency depreciation and their economist expects the rupee to remain in a range of 68 to 72 against the dollar. He reiterates the UBS view of unattractive risk-reward for the Nifty and their underweight call on small and mid-caps. He calls it a tale of two markets. Yes, I'm uh, still bearish overall. Well, uh, let's come to the money markets. Mohan Chanoy of Kotak Mahindra Bank says currency markets are operating in a range awaiting further directions on the trade war and on Iran sanct sanctions. He says the rupee continues to stay steady as support from declining oil prices is offset by general dollar strength. He expects the USD INR pair to trade in a range of 68.45, 68.75 for the day. On the bond markets, Mohan Chinoy says declining crude prices has brought the bond yields lower and the OMO announcement has not significantly changed the bond market sentiment. He expects the 10-year benchmark bond yield to trade in a range of 7.74 to 7.79% for the day. <coughs> okay, over to Mangalam then for the world view. Five straight days of gains for the Dow Jones as well as S&P 500, which is at a 500-five-month a uh, high right now. The Nasdaq, though, pulled off a little from the highs because of some cool-off that we saw in Amazon as well as Netflix, which fell for the second day in a row. Good numbers coming in from Morgan, uh, Morgan Stanley taking that stock higher. Bank of America gaining for the second day in a row along with JP Morgan Chase as well as Citi. So financials doing well out there. After us, we got earnings coming in from American Express, eBay and IBM. Uh, eBay was down about 6%. On the other hand, IBM was up about 4.5% post-markets. US macros, the one data point we need to watch out for. Home 
building out there has plunged to 12%, uh, which is a nine-month low, and the divergence versus estimates has been the lowest since Jan 2007. So this is something that we will keep an eye out on. In terms of individual stocks, Alphabet, the Google parent, uh, the European Union has slapped a $5 billion fine on Google, so keep an eye out on that. That stock fell a little bit in trade yesterday. Talking about the EU, the European markets were good in trade, most of them in the green. Other than that, we had Ericsson, strong numbers coming by, and that stock was up 8.5%. Some money pulled out of emerging markets, so watch out for that. The Asian markets, all of them in the green. The Japanese index outperforming as we speak on account of some trade surplus data. The SGX Nifty indicating a start above that 11,000 mark for starters. Thank you very much for that, Mangalam. Uh, well, let's just uh, take a look at crude prices. Uh, there's been a lot of data, and some of it looked bearish. U.S. crude stocks rose by 5.8 million barrels last week, compared with a forecast of a decline of 3.6 million barrels. Normally, one would have expected that to be bearish. But along with it came gasoline data, gasoline inventory, the analyst uh, uh, who's joining us on the phone line, Philip uh, uh, well, good evening to you. I think you're, uh, you're speaking to us all the way from the United States. Thank you very much for joining us. Uh, well, how should we understand? Is crude now getting into a, a spate of bearish news? Uh, will it be lower lows and lower highs? Well, w the first place is I I'm an economist. I'm not a, a, right. an analyst. And let me uh, just clarify that. So I've, and I've been watching oil for since 1971. Uh, so y y it's still... July 18th here, and uh, so I'm 74. Uh, what we're seeing is a chaos in the market. Uh, if you look at open interest in the three key crude futures, since it peaked uh, about two months ago, it's down 20%, 15%. And what is happening is everybody's pulling away from the market. And there, there are several reasons. One, there were, you know, we have the threat of the Iran sanctions. Now, India is trying to figure out how to deal with the Iran sanctions, and India dealt with it last time, and I, I've watched the Indian government, and you'll do very well. Second, we're dealing with a problem in China. Uh, the U.S. has, uh, and uh, so I, I'm an economist, I spent a lot of time in inter uh, international economics, and the United States is following a really ridiculous policy with, these, uh, with uh, these tariffs on China and everybody else. But China's economy is beginning to slump. Oh. There's, a, there's a huge amount of debt and so on. And, there is, and if they fall, the demand, demand will fall. So you take India, demand is pretty strong based on data that came out the last couple of days. Mm. China is weak. So you look at this, and then you look at uh, the increased production from the United States, and you look at, at, at the uncertainty, and what you have is chaos chaos in the market and it's, it's very difficult for anyone uh, to understand you know my best guess is prices are going to increase at roughly 10 percent a year from current levels and that's based on what investors are, are playing in instruments like the bp royalty trust but we don't know i mean it is you know this this is you know, this la in this last week we saw this wild press conference in helsinki mm -hmm. and and there's just you know we've lost all certainty Okay. Well, I take your point. It is very, very confusing. But uh, we will go with what you are telling us. Uh, at best, uh, looking at the demand supply scenario, 10% higher from current levels. That would still keep it south of $80. Uh, and that's something I think uh, the economy, at least the Indian economy, is preparing for. Thank you very much, Philip, uh, for putting those things into perspective. We have to take a break. On that note, we are coming back with our entire research team to detail to you the micros, the top 10 list of stocks to watch. Welcome back. It's time now to talk about individual stocks. Our entire research team is standing by with CNBC TV 18's top 10 list of stocks for the day. Uh, good morning. Uh, Anuj, what are you looking at today? Uh, you know, uh, Reema, my basic sense is if you are a bull, you should focus on non fno stocks where, you know, there's uh, no uh, shorting at least. Uh, Imami is a stock where you saw a very big jump in delivery volumes. It's a stock which has bounced back from 20-day moving average. And, and, you know, I was seeing one trend that X of lever F FMCG stocks are doing well. Perhaps some money is moving from lever to other FMCG stocks. Uh, that could be a bit of a trade which is playing out. So, Imami would be my first stock to watch. Uh, Kedila is a stock which is in a bear market in a sector which has not done too badly, actually. So, it's underperforming its peers. Uh, and, uh, you know, on good news, it's getting sold into and continues to see delivery-based selling at all levels. Uh, it was last year's biggest pharma stock, and but 
the fall after that from 550 to 350 has been rather significant. So that's the second stock to watch today. Okay. Well, Reema, uh, mine tree numbers came after market yesterday. And very strong growth numbers. So in terms of dollar terms, the dollar revenue growth is at a 16 quarter high, a four year high. It's a growth of 6.9% on a quarter on quarter basis. And if you look at it on a year on year basis, it's tracking now a 20% growth. In constant currency too, it's a growth of close to about 8.2%, much higher than expectations. Um, other metrics that we're looking at, margins have come down by 200 basis points on account of a wage hike. Digital growth is quite good. It now contributes 47% to their overall portfolio, the highest in 8.2 percent much higher than expectations um, other metrics that we're looking at margins have come down by 200 basis points on account of a wage hike digital growth is quite good it now contributes 47 percent to their overall portfolio the highest in the sector it's seen a growth of about 35 percent on a year-on-year -year basis uh, the guidance from the company they've said that q2 revenues will be lower than that of q1 but then again q1 was so strong at 8 percent plus secondly they've said margins will expand slightly compared to q1 now the the problem is, while the numbers are looking good, the stock is expensive. It's doubled in the last one year. It's now trading at 21, 22 times F520 PE, the highest in the sector. But, um, you know, I think this I would go with green despite high valuations in the run-up because of the kind of growth numbers. They were now possibly looking at even a 20% growth or close to that for Mindtree in F519. Okay. Uh, well, that's strong numbers and good to hear that. Uh, uh, IT numbers have been uh, extremely unpredictable, some doing extremely well and some doing not so well. But let's get to the policy announced on exploration by the government yesterday. Sonal, will it have a positive impact on exploration companies? Yes, it will, Lata. Well, to just uh, put the news in front of you, CCA has approved a policy framework where the companies like ONGC and Oil India will have to pay royalty on oil and, uh, oil and gas blocks before 99 based on the equity value or the participating interest. Earlier, they used to pay royalty and says up to 100% based on the production. So that is mildly positive because right now the uh, blocks under consideration or under question for ONGC and Oil India are not much but this definitely is positive additionally uh, it has also been announced that the companies will be allowed to claim 100% uh, deduction of the expenses that they incur on these production contracts additionally they will also be extend uh, given an extension in time period for hydrocarbon blocks back in northeastern states so that is definitely positive for these companies okay sonal thanks a lot for that uh, Mangalam, what about JK Tires? A good set of numbers, Anuj, for JK Tires. 35% uh, revenue growth, upwards of 2,400 crores. Uh, the uh, operational numbers were very good. The company posted an EBITDA gain of 205 crores. This compares with the loss. And even the bottom line, 64 crore profit, that compares with the loss of about 118 crores. Why did the operational performance improve? Because the India business out there, the EBIT came in at 20, 227 crores. This compares with the loss. Add to that, the management commentary was also very positive. They said that this traction is likely to continue 10,000 crores of the revenue that they guiding for in this fiscal with improving margins. So let's see how that stock pans out in trade today. Okay. Well, thanks a lot for that. Uh, but I think one big talking point today will be sugar companies. Uh, Manisha, yesterday the uh, fair and remunerative price for sugar cane was announced. Oh, well, yes, uh, you know, 275 rupees per quintal is what we are looking at, a 10% recovery. But I just want to put out some maths for you. If you look at uh, 275 rupees for 10% recovery, and if we are looking at a cane production of 325 million tons, that calculation comes to 89,000 crores. That is what the farmers will get this year if the mills are able to pay all of that amount. But we are looking at a sugar consumption in India at around 26 million tons. So when you calculate that with 29 rupees of an MSP that the government has fixed or even 30 rupees uh, for the sake of easy calculations, that comes to around 84,000 crores. So uh, when you're looking at 89,000 crores and I'm sorry, 78,000 crores. Mm. So that still is, is a loss to uh, the mills here. And, uh, and the point is that we still are looking at a huge surplus in case of sugar. So, uh, and the exports are not viable because if you look at the cost of production, that comes to around 35 rupees per kg. The Indian prices are ruling at around 29 to 30 and the export cost comes to 22 rupees per kg. So whichever way you look, I don't think it's going to be a very great session for the sugar stocks today. Oh, yes. Uh, yesterday we actually spotted Balram Puschini and it's a stock which is making 52 week lows anyway and uh, uh, sugar cycle is now down so obviously it is a good chance uh, that uh, perhaps uh, it will seek lower levels. Manisha, thanks a lot uh, for giving us that information. Uh, Reema, telecom numbers? Uh, well, uh, the May subscriber data is out. Mm. Uh, TRAI has released it. 
Uh, some key points. One, Geo continues with its uh, run rate. So they continue to add close to about 9 million subscribers plus every month. This has gone on for the last three months. Uh, their market share is now in sharp to 18.2%. Bharti shows a big jump in their subscriber data, but that is largely on account of the Telenor uh, subscribers, which got added on. X of that, it's quite flat. The problem is Idea Vodafone appear to be struggling. So Idea has lost 2.5 million subscribers uh, on a month-on-month -month basis in May, while Vodafone has only added 0.5 four million subscribers and idea has lost um, uh, subscribers in 21 out of their 22 circles so this delay in the idea Vodafone merger seems to be impacting their operational performance and even they've, they've lost a few subscribers so that's not good news that is the table of how the performance has been in the month of May so Bharti per se would be good it's good but that's uh, only on account of Telenor Additional. X of that on an organic basis if you say it's quite on the flatter side all right uh, well those stocks uh, like the sugar stocks have already lost a lot uh, Ekta Kadila, we, uh, Anuj referred to it but uh, you have more news on that Yes, uh, they are going to seek shareholder nod to raise around 10,000 odd crores. They have said earlier uh, that it is an enabling resolution in case there is a, any sort of transaction that they like, they wouldn't have a deterrent in terms of fundraising and hence that is the only motivation for that. They've done it in the past, in the past two to three years. But probably another reason for an overhang on the stock, so maybe we could expect some red today. Okay, thank you very much for that. Uh, Sonal, on real estate, they will be meeting the finance ministry today. That's right, Reema. Finance Ministry will be meeting today and the focus will be on the real estate sector. Some of the points that they might be discussing will be the biggest problem is these companies are not getting enough credit uh, or funds from the bankers. Other few discussion points will be the GST issue. Uh, currently, the rate is 12% on ongoing projects. On the final completed projects, there is no GST. So they want the GST rate to be reduced to around 6% because the cost of ongoing projects is coming higher than what was expected. Apart from that, there are other huge local taxes land development charges, FSI charges. So some discussion is expected on that. Also, there are still approvals and environmental clearances delay that these companies are seeing. So that might also be discussed today. So real estate companies will be in focus today. Back to you. Oh, yes, uh, realty companies. And I guess uh, uh, the housing minister may ask banks to lend loans. And if they lend loans, they get charge sheeted. It will be an interesting development. OK, uh, just keep your eyes on Yes Bank as well. There is a Mint newspaper report saying that the SEBI is examining Yes Bank's emails to UBS, uh, the brokerage firm, because UBS put out a report uh, uh, explaining Yes Bank's exposure to power companies. UBS had used uh, ROC, Registrar of Companies, data, and uh, Yes Bank had objected to the report, asked it to be withdrawn. SEBI thinks that violates rules. That's what the report says. So it's a sentiment negative probably for Yes Bank. And the stock has run up for 10 straight days in a row from levels of 335 to 385. But Anisha, over to you. Some more numbers. Well, yes, Reema, thank you so much for that. I'll start with Mahindra CIE because that came out with quite a bit of strong numbers. As you can see, the revenue jumped by around 45%, the profit is up 150%, and the margins as well expanded by 150 basis point. Moving on to Saskin, where the revenue growth came in at around 4%. The margins, however, deteriorated a tad bit, came in at 15.4%, but the other income of the company jumped up by 79%, and that's the reason why you're seeing an 8% uptick when it comes to the profits. Moving on to GHCL, where the number are not really enthusing at all because the revenues have remained flat at 750 crores and the margins have deteriorated by 90 basis point. As a result, you can see the profit being down by around 55 percent. Lastly, on Reliance Communications, uh, well, the numbers are, uh, I am not sure how the stock will react today because the revenue is up around 3 percent, but the loss from continuing operation is also up around 40 percent, came in at around 110 crores. But if you look at the overall net loss of the company, including the discontinuing operation, it is down to just 334 crores versus 19,700 crores that they reported last year. So that is something to notice. Uh, the company says that they will close the debt resolution as planned by the end of quarter two. So that might give some respite. Back to you. Okay. Well, uh, disclosures. Uh, uh, Relcom is supposed to have sold a large business uh, to Reliance uh, uh, Industries, uh, mm -hmm. Rel Geo, that is. And uh, Reliance, of course, owns the uh, 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 company which owns the channel that you are watching. Uh, that deal has to get done by September. Mm -hmm. The Reserve Bank's February 12th circular is very clear that if uh, deals, uh, stressed assets over 2,000 crore are not settled by September in six months, uh, they could go to NCLT. Mm -hmm. Then you have to start all over again. So, you know, this has to fight uh, at, and reach the finish line by September.
Okay, it's been delayed for so long. But let's do a quick recap then of the top uh, stocks that you need to have on your radar this morning. Stocks which could be in the green include Imami, Mindtree, ONGC, Oil India, JK Tyres, India Bulls Housing, HDFC Limited, Shobha, Mahindra CIE, Saskin and Reliance Communication. Uh, while stocks with negative news flow include Yes Bank, Cadilla, Idea Cellular, GHCL, sugar stocks like Marampur Chini, Dwarike Sugar and Bajaj Hindustan. Right, uh, let's uh, just keep it with companies and numbers. Bandhan Bank posted an excellent set of numbers yesterday. 47.5% rise in net profit. Its gross NPAs also rose uh, to 388 crore, more than doubled. Uh, that's at the end of the June quarter from 175 crore in the same quarter last year. But that's a year-on-year comparison. Let's <laughs> listen to what the management had to say. The stock absolutely roared after the numbers yesterday. As a bank... Uh, our uh, last the three uh, to five years, uh, the growth of the balance sheet, if you say that at the advanced side, so year on year basis, 51% growth was there. And the, because of the last year, we are very conservatively uh, taking some decision to not to grow that much. And, uh, and we are streamlined total process system on that and build up the capacity of the peoples and uh, we are waiting for that. But uh, this year, that is a normal way. We are uh, trying to uh, meet up the need of the people's uh, credit need. And I hope that that has been helped.